morning. It's a great joy to be with you to share in worship this morning, whether you're here in church or whether you are actually in your own homes. Uh, If you're in your own homes, of course, you've got the added advantage of going to be able to make a cup of tea during the sermon. But apart from that, it's really good to have you you here. Um, A glorious morning as we continue this Easter season. Obviously, our worship this morning a little bit more subdued and reflective perhaps than it would normally be at this time of year as we remember um, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And David has prepared some intercessions for us, um, which we will uh, share later, um, in which we will particularly remember uh, the Duke and Her Majesty the Queen in her sadness and the royal family at this time. I'm sad that um, the reason I'm here, I'm Bishop Jeff, by the way, if we haven't met before, uh, Assistant Bishop in the Diocese, is because Chris, um, your vicar isn't too well, I'm told. Um, So hopefully he will also make uh, a speedy recovery. Um, I'm sorry I'm only rolled out when when he's not around, but um, I can assure you we do know each other. uh, I like him very much, and uh, it's a great joy to be able to stand here in his stead today. So let's just settle our hearts and minds as we come together to worship our Lord on this second Sunday of the Easter season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So let us take a moment of silence just to recall all those things that we have said or done this week, which perhaps we're not very proud of, the things that we should have done. And as we bring them before God, let us seek and know that we will receive God's forgiveness. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer to collect our thoughts together on this second Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Our first reading during the Easter season is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. This is Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you might have life in his name. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. 
So we continue to celebrate Easter, that great and special celebration that proclaims that we believe in a Lord and Saviour who is alive and at work in the world today. And the Gospel reading that we've just heard describes two very special moments in the story of Jesus. The disciples were afraid. The Master whom they so loved, who spoke with authority, who raised people from the dead and seemed himself to be so indestructible, had been subjected to a mockery of injustice and put to death with criminals. What hope would there be for them, his followers, if even Jesus was unable to defend himself? And so the disciples gathered in fear. The doors locked to give them a sense of security. St. John tells us very little about what was actually happening in the room, although he was keen to emphasize that the doors were shut, for this makes what happened even more remarkable. Jesus himself came and stood among the disciples. Jesus, who had died, was now able to pass through all barriers in order to stand along his, alongside his disciples once more. What a special moment. And how those disciples turned from being full of fear to being ecstatic with joy. Jesus was with them again. They felt safe and totally elated. But Thomas was not there. We can understand his refusal to believe the others when they told him such an amazing story. He probably thought they were setting him up to look like a fool. No wonder he demanded proof. He needed to see with his own eyes before he too could believe. And then a week later, Jesus appears again. Not only to the disciples, but this time to Thomas as well. And the sight of the visible Lord offers Thomas that proof that he sought. And Thomas proclaims him as, my Lord and my God. But notice two things that make these encounters with Jesus even more special. Firstly, on both occasions, Jesus greeted his disciples with the words, peace be with you. This was the kind of peace that only Jesus can offer. Not as the world gives, does he give to us. The peace of our Lord is far more than just an absence of war and strife, although of course that's part of it. Rather, it's the peace that comes from knowing that we are loved and accepted by him, despite all our failings and inadequacies. And he wants nothing more than for us to return that love and acceptance. To do this through our worship and in the way that we relate to God and to one another. Jesus loves us just the way we are, but of course loves us far too much to leave us that way. And secondly, Jesus breathes on his disciples. Jesus knew that loving and serving him is often far from easy. And so we need the gift of the Holy Spirit to enable and strengthen us for that task ahead. And in the reading that we've just heard, the Bible uses the same words that is used in the story of the creation in the book of Genesis, when God is described as breathing life into Adam. Jesus now breathes new life into his followers, his church, which now certain of his resurrection was ready to carry his peace outside into the world, beyond those locked doors. For faith is to be shared. We're not called to batten down the hatches like Noah and protect ourselves from the raging tempests that inflict themselves on the world around us. But rather, Jesus has commissioned us to go, to go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and in the knowledge that he himself is with us until the end of time. What Jesus asks of us, his followers of the 21st century, is exactly the same as he asked of those first disciples 2,000 years ago. That we should deepen our love and knowledge of him through our worship and should serve him in the world by telling others the good news of his love for them and show them that love by practical caring for them and having concern for the world that God has given to us by seeking justice and encouraging all that is good in humanity, enabling individuals to reach their potential and goals in life, by standing alongside those in need, just as Jesus stands with us all. That is how we bring about the kingdom of God. But in this kingdom, the United Kingdom, from the many tributes that are being paid to His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, it's clear that he, as an individual, has tried to demonstrate these qualities throughout his very long life of service. Nourished by his own faith, he has reached out to others and used the skills and benefits of his position to improve lives not only in this country, but throughout the Commonwealth. His support for young people through his award scheme and his prophetic concern for the environment and the future of the planet have been truly remarkable. And so we do thank God for his life and the example he has given to us. And of course, we pray for Her Majesty the Queen and her family in their sadness at this time. Whenever we try to live out what we believe rather than just talking about it, we are following in the way of Jesus. We can sense his peace and be assured of the gift of the Holy Spirit giving us the strength we need. These can be our special moments. Times when we can truly say, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Our St. Mother Teresa once expressed it. Christ Jesus, in holy communion, I find you under the forms of bread and wine. In my everyday life, I find you in all the people I meet, especially when they need help. For you said, anything you do for one of my brothers or sisters, you do for me. Amen. So let us now affirm that faith that we share in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
So let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. The Intercessory Prayers When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for our world, which is your world. We ask your blessing on the coming spring and summer days that will bring the needed balance of sunshine and rain and the right temperatures for crops, especially for those countries suffering from global warming. We pray for those whose livelihoods have been turned upside down by climate change, that they may find ways to cope. We pray for those who still refuse to see that humanity is responsible for so many dire changes. We pray for guidance in amending our ways of living so as to restore the world to the way you created it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, just as the disciples of Jesus were told by him to go out into the world as leaders of the new Christian faith, we pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, the bishops of Winchester and Southampton, for the ministry team here at St. John's. We ask you to guide them as they lead us in being good stewards of the Christian faith. We pray also for other Christian leaders and also for leaders of other faiths. We pray for all those behind the scenes who make these services possible, for all who have had to learn new technology. We give thanks that it is possible for us to still worship via the internet when we cannot meet in person. We ask for patience to wait until we can all meet together in church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for all people, for those who already know you and know your love, that they may continue to lead good Christian lives, and for those who do not yet know you, that they may come to see your love in their lives. Just as you walked amongst your believers after your resurrection, we ask that you walk with us in our troubled and busy lives. We ask you to be with those whose jobs take them into dangerous situations, such as the police, the fire service, the armed forces, and all in the medical profession, especially those who work to help those suffering from COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for those who suffer from illness and ask your guidance for those who care for them. We pray for those confined to nursing homes or hospitals and for their friends and families. We pause a moment to pray for those family and friends of our own who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for those who have died, for the family and friends who grieve for them. We pray especially for the Queen and her family, who mourn the loss of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. He was a stalwart member of the Royal Family, who worked tirelessly for the benefit of our country, notably for establishing the Duke of Edinburgh Award Program for young people. We pause a moment to pray for those family and friends of our own who we have lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for our world, which is your world. A week ago, we celebrated your resurrection from the dead. We pray for your continued presence in our lives, in all that we say and do. We ask you to be with us wherever we are, confined to home, out in the street, in the car, in the supermarket. As the days go longer and warmer, help us to remember to give thanks to you for all the blessings of the earth, the sunshine streaming through the windows and the rain upon the roof, the birds singing in the garden, 
and the bees and butterflies flying about. Help us to be shining examples of your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ descended to death and hell, passed through doors locked by fear, to breathe the spirit of peace and make us one humanity. Nothing can now separate us from the love of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Not because I invite you. Come, it is our Lord. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, God of freedom, for you breathed life into the void and showed yourself as the one who loves in freedom. From the nothingness of slavery, you called a people into being and led them to springs of life. The presence of your glory went with shattered exiles into strange and distant lands and gathered from the valley of despair the flesh and blood of living hope. In Jesus, you confronted the powers that killed and oppressed. You spoke to those considered dead and helped them stand again. He taught us to die that we might live. He gave himself for us, tortured and forsaken, but he could not be confined by death. In the garden, he speaks our name. In the breaking of the bread, he shows himself among us. By the lakeside, in the new day, he calls us to take up his work. Therefore, with all who lost faith, all who walked away in sadness, with the women at the tomb and the men who hid in fear, we confess ourselves surprised by the suddenness of dawn and join the undying song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, 
took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. John, Our Lady Mary, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of Christ.
risen Christ, whom we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands, the word of life in whom our joy is complete, send us out to declare your truth, your unshakable faith in the world you love. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the living God remove the suffocating shroud that lies upon our world. May the risen Saviour draw the sting of death, bringing all to life in him. May the flowing Spirit set us and all creation free and seal our hearts with faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Now it says on my service sheet, notices. Are there any notices that need to be given this morning, please? Ah. Yeah. Uh, no real notices as such, other than to say thank you very much for being with us this morning, thank Jeff. You. I know it was very short notice. Uh, and also thank you again to David for doing the intercessions uh, twice. He actually did them again yesterday afternoon. Um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, as it was the case yesterday, the church porch will be open uh, all of today. So the, the candle stand will be in the porch. So if anyone's watching at home and would like to come in and light a candle uh, in remembrance of uh, His Royal Highness, then they're more than welcome to do, do so. So thank you very much. Thank you. In that case, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>